there's just way, 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 way too much going on here. Hey everyone, welcome back to Low Luxury. Today, we are taking a look at Matthew M. William from Alix's first collection with Givenchy, that is the Spring Summer 21 collection. And I've gotta say, the reaction from most people in the press has not been good. But I figured we gotta get a first-hand look at this thing, so I'm doing some live reactions to this. I haven't really looked at this, I just downloaded the images, and now we're gonna check them out, mostly the menswear, and we're gonna see what we think of this collection. Let's get into it. But before we get going, I've looked into it, and a very, very tiny percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So it doesn't cost you anything. If you like the content I make, just click that subscribe button, and I thank you profusely. So this first look is really, really plain, and I've never really understood why designers start with these plain looks for their shows, especially your first collection with the house overall. You should really start it with a bang, and this is not that. It's very monochrome, very simple, a bit Rick Owens, long line, asymmetrical. The bag I can't really get a good look at. The only really thing that pops are those shoes and I do think they're cool. Obviously that heel I would say is a reference to the famous Naomi Campbell horns from the Alexander McQueen years. And the thing is it's cute, but I think if you're gonna reference something as iconic as that, you can't just throw it in uh, the heel of a shoe as a reference. Like it's not quite enough and it doesn't quite do it enough justice, honestly. Um, the shoe silhouette, we will see this a few times I noticed. It's almost like an elastication around the foot. It kind of pulls in and cinches a little bit, which is very cool. I saw Diet Prada comparing it to Phoebe Philo from Celine though, and it did look pretty similar, so I'll leave that kind of up for interpretation, we'll say. This next look is our first menswear look, and it is very tailored, very nice looking cream suit. Fairly plain, I'd say more of a boxy fit. You've got like a pink button down underneath. Again, the bag you can't really see, although I will note it does look like a fairly feminine bag, kind of. That, that's really coming in now with the Telfars of the world and such, and I'm here for it. The shoes are by far the most interesting piece of this. I was really hoping that with uh, Matthew M. Williams coming to Givenchy, he could really do a lot of interesting fabrication because he does a lot of that with Alix, but a lot of times it's printed or it's faux because he just, it's too expensive. But with Givenchy, you've got a budget to play with. And this looks really, really luxe and really cool. Of course, a slightly chunky sole, which he's very much known for, so I'm into that. Now we've got some more tailoring, this time for a woman. I think that those uh, arm cutouts for the shoulders are incredible. I really, really love them. Um, and this is the first time we're kind of getting a bit of a Balenciaga reference, I would say. So not fully original, but it kind of is what it is. Obviously, they're kind of the kings at the moment. So there are worse people to copy from. I also saw a lot of hate online for these shoes, the kind of three-pronged sandals, and they were compared to Muppets and stuff. But I'm honestly here for them. I think it's cool. We've got the tabby. Why not have the trippy, it's a triple, you know, just working things out. And that's a good name. You can have it, Matthew. Um, it's kind of Spartan. It's kind of cool. So I'm into it. Now this next one is a menswear look, but it has, I think, a bit of a similar look to that first women's wear look, the opening look of the collection. Um, but I think that fabrication is much better in this case. It looks like a kind of silk, satin, something like that. It has a bit of a sheen to it, which I'm very much here for. The high-waisted pant underneath is really nice. Again, it is reminding me a lot of Rick Owens. So a bit referential, a bit derivative, yes, but very nice looking, and now you've got those same uh, shoes, but this time in kind of a white croc leather, something like that, along with matching bag. And I love that bag. It's very similar, just a square bag, very kind of like masculine, but really cool. Like I would use that bag all day long. Here we've got some more tailoring. This looks pretty similar to that white one, but now we've got it in black. And the shoes here looks like similar, but now they're in just like a black leather. Not much to say about this. Just that boxy fit. It is nice, it's very in right now, so I get it. But nothing too special, except for that shirt underneath. Looks like it may be a zip up rather than a button up, which is a nice twist and I appreciate it. 
And now we're getting into a bit more of the sportiness, the street element that Matthew Williams, I think, was really brought into Givenchy to bring, because that's something that Claire Wade Keller very much did not have. Although I will say, I really appreciated the sportiness of Claire Wade Keller's ready-to-wear looks, those Givenchy t-shirts and hoodies and things. They had like track stripes, very athleisure vibe to them. And I like that a lot, but I think that Matthew's gonna bring something way different and a bit harder to it, as we can already see. And this look, there's a lot going on here. You've got this kind of parka jacket. It looks a bit puffy, quite oversized, but you've got these kind of elements of red around the sleeves and the hem that look quite sporty, a bit tech, and that's cool, and that's something that people really look to at leaks for, so it's no surprise that they're bringing it here. The shoes are really cool. They're this kind of cracked, maybe cracked leather or perhaps alligator, python leather, something like that, and they've got this big chunky sole that comes out the back. And that is something that I'm really, really looking for him to do at Givenchy. Their shoe game has been horrible lately under Clairway Keller. Like I, like I said, I did like her designs, but her shoes were not good. They were just nothing to write home about. So I'm really happy to see a new signature sneaker here. And I think it's a good look. It's um, a silhouette that we really haven't seen before. I don't feel that this is too derivative of anyone else. And it feels like Givenchy in that kind of Alexander McQueen tradition, so I'm here for it. And now we do also get a better look at that bag, and again, very, very feminine silhouette, that dip, it's really just like a purse, but hey, when you, when you pair it with this really hard, masculine look here, it's really cool, so I'm into this look here. And here we've got a women's wear look, and this is where it starts to get a little tough. It's looking a little tacky, all of the mixing of the different animal leathers and then the red there that's cinched around the neck. It's a lot going on and I can understand why this didn't resonate with people. And here we've got a women's wear version of that parka paired with the heels and we get a better look at it. There's some tech elements. There's like, it almost looks like a dual collar going on unless that's another layered piece underneath. But I think it's really cool and it's something that you don't see a lot of. So I think it's a good look. And now we have a leather version of that, and it looks, I actually like it more in the tech fabric. In leather, it looks pretty heavy, and it's a bit vetement for me. It doesn't feel like Givenchy. So I think stick with those tech fabrics, the nylon or polyester or whatever those other ones were, and leave the leather out of this kind of silhouette. This next women's wear look is one that we need to talk about. So there's not a lot going on here. And again, it's that kind of drape fabric that we saw before in the red, but now it's in black with these purple pants. And I can totally see why some people are saying, this is not high fashion, this is not Givenchy. But I think what you need to keep in mind is that Matthew M. Williams' clientele at Alix was very much, you know, this hip hop culture, kind of um, streetwear culture. And it's understandable, and I can see why sort of high fashion people, they don't resonate with that, and they don't think it belongs in their fashion. But I think they kind of need to shift their mindset, because this is the kind of look that, while I can see, you know, the white, rich Europeans of the world being like, I don't want anything to do with this, you could see Rihanna wearing this, right? Somebody like that. So I think that's really who Matthew is trying to bring into the fold at Givenchy as clientele, someone that hasn't really been there before. This next look is a bit of a mess. The cut of the waist is way too high for such a heavy jacket like that. It makes it really, really top heavy. And we're gonna see some looks like this where the proportions and the weight just don't feel right. And I think there's some tweaking that's needed there. Now here's a fun one. And this is ridiculous, that leather Speedo is absurd, okay? I don't know what it's doing here. I don't understand it. It's kind of cheeky, kind of fun, but it's also a mess and I'm gonna leave it there. But we do get that jacket, which is a really great jacket. A lot of pockets, a lot of um, technical elements, cargo elements, street kind of outdoorsy elements, which you don't really see right now from Givenchy. So I'm into that. Sandals are obviously a really, really huge thing right now with uh, coronavirus going on. You know, people are really looking for that 
home wear type of feel and sandals are a great way to go. But of course, you gotta put in that chunky sole. A chunky sole sandal is a great way to go. It again does feel a little Rick Owens to me, but not heavily, heavily so. It's not completely specifically derivative of anything specific he's doing, so that's okay. And now again, we get another one of those looks that I can see the high fashion people saying, get this out of here. This is not what I'm looking for. But again, keep in mind that new clientele that Matthew is trying to bring in. Obviously, they had some of that before with Kanye wearing the, you know, um, mid to late 2000s, like Rottweiler print hoodies, stuff like that. But this is something else. Although, again, you have a very much Alexander Wang at Balenciaga vibe here. You've got a Vet Maw vibe here. So while it's something new and it's something that I understand for the clientele, it looks like they're going after, um, it's not necessarily original. This next look is something really great. It's really simple, but you've got these technical pants with a slightly high waist. You've got some patent leather black shoes with that chunky heeled sole. And then you've got this incredible leather crossbody bag that's really the centerpiece of this. And it's almost like if a fuck boy turned into a rude boy. And you know, I grew up in the ska scene, I get that. So this works for me and I would wear this bag all day, every day. It is, ah, I love it. And then Matthew starts getting into some of the softer pieces and you've got this kind of, I don't know, like taffeta fabric here, but I don't really understand what the straps are. Although I do think it looks really, really nice in a coat. I just think there's some tweaking that's needed here. And that's the case with a lot of this. I can see the direction, but there is some light tweaking and a bit more originality, honestly, that's needed in some of these pieces. Here we get another rude boy fuck boy. I'm here for it, I've already said it. I think it looked better in the red, but still a good look. Tank top is obviously super simple, but that's because the highlight of this for the top is very much that bag, so that's fine with me. Hmm. We've got more Speedo parkas. And here's another problem that I saw people referring to online, which was like, where are these people going, you know, with the situation that the world is currently in, we're all stuck at home. Who is this customer and where would they be wearing this, especially at this point in time? So there is a bit of tone deafness there in that this may not be what the customer is looking for right now. And I fully sympathize with that and I do think that's a good argument. But if you look at it from another angle, there's almost something potentially optimistic in this because again, we're seeing these looks right now, but this is the spring summer 21 collection. They're not gonna be in stores for people to actually buy for months. So if you're being optimistic, you could imagine, I could see you wanting to imagine that the world may be in a much closer to normal place then, and maybe people will be looking for their leather speedos and parkas. One can only hope, right? Now we've got another women's wear look, again with that sheer top that we've seen before, but now we've got these kind of fish gill cutout pants. And these are very cool. They're kind of a biker style, but it's a bit of a departure for Givenchy. I could see this being more of a Balma type of thing. Again, the Vetement type deal with that, their whole biker vibe that they've got going on. But it is a good look. And if you're really trying to change the direction of the house, I think that's okay. Obviously, some people, they have much more allegiance and reverence towards the house of Givenchy, and I fully understand that, but I also understand wanting a big change, and that's okay with me. In this look, we've got a sheer top for the man, a tank top here, and then these pants with a very high waist, I believe, and I do like that. The high waist, I think, is a great look right now, and it's very much in. The top is very Alexander Wang. We've seen those sandals before. We've already talked about them. The belt is a bit of a G. I'd like to get a better look at that because right now it's just very, very Gucci reading to me, but I'll let that slide until I can get a closer look at it because the light's kind of shining. So we'll leave that aside. But then he's also got a flask, a silver flask, and that is a choice. I mean, with the state the world is in right now, we we're just talking about that, a flask may be what's needed. 
This next look is classic Matthew M. Williams, very Aleeks. So it's this really, really nice, almost uh, tuxedo jacket because you do have the different fabrication for the lapel. And then it's this kind of like painted leather. I'd love to know what exactly that is. It does look to have some kind of cut texture to it. And then you've got these very tech straps up at the shoulders, like almost looks like he's wearing a backpack or something. So all of this, tracks very much with what Alex was doing and who their clientele was. So if you can kind of upsell them from Alex to Givenchy and bring that clientele in, I think that that is a great move. Like if you have all of the rappers wearing Givenchy, sure, maybe the high fashion people don't want that, but the people who are actually going into the stores and buying loads of this stuff, the rappers and singers and actors, that's who they're looking for, for their style influences. They're not really looking to the high fashion people. So that is a clientele that you want. This next look, again, very much in line with something Alix would do, that military wear inspired thing. I love the cream color. It is absolutely perfect. The hidden button closures at the shirt is great. It really kind of streamlines it and makes it something special. This kind of little pocket that's coming down. I don't know what it is, but I'm into it. The hot, super high waist pants where everything's tucked in. It looks kind of like a little stiff and buttoned up. I don't know how comfortable it is, but it's a great look. These little triangle cutouts at the bottom for the shoes. I don't know. I will say, I don't know why you pair the sandals with this because that little cutout in the pants is perfect for showing off an actual shoe where you have something happening more towards the ankle. But that is really my only complaint about this look. I love it. And here I think is where people start getting really out of touch with this. That leather hat with the horns. It's cheeky. It's kind of low. Like it's not high fashion. That is low fashion right there. And people really do not like it. I would never buy this. It's not for me. If I saw somebody wearing it, I'd probably laugh at them because they would just look silly. I get it's one thing to do it really well shot in a studio for a fashion lookbook. Wearing it on the street is another thing and I don't know if it would ever work on the street. And that's all I'll say about that. But the pants are fantastic. Again, it's that, I don't know what kind of leather it is, but it's a very nice leather, I'm sure. And then this belt, oh my God. Of course, Matthew M. Williams has become very, very, very known for his jewelry. Obviously, Drake, people like that, love buying Alique's jewelry, these big, chunky Cuban links, stuff like that. And if he can bring that to Givenchy, again, a huge money maker for them. So why the fuck not? Here we've got another horn shirtless look, this time in gold. I'm sure now that belt just went up in price about a thousand bucks because now it's gold and I'll leave it there. Now we're getting into a bit more tailoring, this time with a long coat, but there is one tech element here, right here, a little kind of lock or clasp or something uh, right at the waist, which I'm here for. You've got this bag here, which is a little tiny pocket bag. I think Jacques Mou really popularized that and now other houses are taking it, which I think is a great thing. Different size bags for guys is a good thing. They don't all have to be like massive briefcases. Um, the pants, it's actually hard to tell what's going on, but it does maybe look like that kind of ripped up denim potentially that uh, Matthew has been showing off on his Instagram lately. So overall, it's a clean look. This next look is, I will admit, it's tacky. Like the, the scarf over the bag, the pink and the red, it's very loud. And here is that kind of ripped up pants that we've been talking about, which is really cool, but in pink, I don't think it works that well. And you've got some spiky red heels. I don't think I have to tell you that that is a look that has been done before. The spiked shoes, and I don't know why Matthew would do it. It's just so overdone. This next look, we've got that tailor jacket again, although this one is shorter and it's got that lock right there at the side. I think that's a really good thing now that we get to look at it from the front. It's kind of like in place of a button. So that's a new way to close a blazer and I'm into it. Why not have new ways to do that? And then you've got this like painted pink denim and very loud and when you pair it with the blazer, it's a really interesting look. And again, gets into that question of who is this customer and where are they going, especially with sandals. So as a look, I don't think it works, but as individual pieces, I think it does. Okay, now this one, 
is maybe the worst look so far. And I think it has the same problem as the last one. There's just way, 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 way too much going on here. You've got the horns, you've got this camp collar patterned um, like leopard shirt, you've got this vest, this weird python vest going on. You've got these sleeves underneath, this long sleeve, again printed. You've got the ripped up white denim pants. You've got a backpack with a scarf over it. And then you've got these chunky leather shoes. That is maybe four too many pieces for this look. But if you break them down, um, the two shirts, the camp collar shirt and the long sleeve underneath it, they don't do much for me. I don't like those prints. They look kind of cheap, kind of tacky. We've talked about the hat, it's not for me. The necklaces are nice. The vest, I don't know what it's for, but I think it looks good, which may be the most important thing. I think the pants are fantastic. The shoes are great. I would wear those every day. A leather backpack, take it or leave it. The scarf, take it or leave it. But there's elements here that are good. This one has the exact same problem. Obviously, there's some different pieces in there. It's a different print, different pants, but it's got the exact same problem. I don't know why you would do this. It's just not a good look for you, and it doesn't present your vision well. And now, this look is a problem as well. Um, I will first say that the shoes are really, really cool when they're done in black like that, especially when you can see it from the side, they almost start to look like duck boots, like rain boots with that kind of cinched texture. I think you know what I mean there, especially in black. They look like they may be a rubber. I'm gonna guess they're leather, but from here they look like rubber and I wanna see them in rubber. I think that would be fantastic. And the bag is also good too with that lock motif going on. But that top, What's going on there? Where are you going? Why is it there? What are you covering up? It looks like a person's just wearing a billboard or like a censored sign, and it doesn't even look done well. It just kind of looks like some, I don't know, like scuba suit material that's just been wrapped around and just sewn shut right there. It's just not good and it's confusing. And now we've got the same look here. And from this angle, it looks slightly better because it starts to look almost like a tuxedo shirt or something with like a mandarin collar. So I don't know if this is the same or if it's, been, it's slightly altered from that first one, but it does look a little better, better here. And you've got that strap coming down, which is a new element. I still don't understand what its purpose is, but at least it looks slightly better. And finally, we're gonna look at it in this version in a women's wear look. Geez, um, I don't know why you close your show with this. So it's that same box on top, but now in a really, really over the top leather, kind of like exotic animal leather. And it looks heavy. It weighs her down. The rest of the look is very light and airy and could be nice, I'm sure. But like you throw that on top of her and suddenly she looks like she's carrying the world on her. She looks so heavy and of course so covered up. Um, that it drowns everything else out. I don't know what to say about the rest of it. We've got the spiked shoes again, which again, not great, very derivative. So why you close with this is beyond me. So those are my thoughts on the new Matthew M. Williams collection for Givenchy, his first collection for them. I'm really interested in seeing where he goes from here. I think he's got a lot of interesting ideas, some of which were on display here, but I think there needs to be some tweaking, some refining, slightly higher taste level at times and also just a little bit more originality but i think some of these directions are great and i do have faith that he will figure it out because i think he did so at alix and if he can do it there he can do it here as well thank you for watching if you like this video subscribe to the channel check out the other video down here and i'll see you next time